story time. Today I'm gonna to talk about how I got into fingerboarding. So when I was a kid, my mom took my brother and I to the store like every weekend. Uh, she would take us to this place called Hills, uh, which later shut down and became an Ames. And she would take us to like Kmart, stuff like that. But my favorite store was KB Toys. I was really into skateboarding when I was younger because it was becoming really popular. Uh, the video games were coming out. Uh, all my friends were into skating. So I got into skateboarding uh, before fingerboarding. And my mom used to buy me like the, uh, the cheap boards at like Kmart and stuff because my parents didn't know about skate shops and stuff like that. So I'd get my boards at like Kmart, KB Toys, you know, the cheap cheap setups so yeah back around like i'd say 2001 um is when i first saw tech decks in the toy aisle i actually remember the first ones that i bought it was a deca six pack and i was like really attracted to like this orange and yellow board and uh i think i wanted that whole pack just so i could have that board uh but i also remember there being like a white and red board in there and uh, it was like a day one song deck. I used that one a lot too, but I remember my main was like this yellow and orange board and I was like, I was so hyped on that. I don't know why. <laughs> so yeah, I asked my mom if she could grab me that. I'm like, yeah, please like, grab me that. So she came through, shout out mom. So I grabbed that. I remember taking it home, opening it, and I had no idea what I was doing. I was taking like my action figures and like pretending to like they were riding it. Like, I didn't really know how to do anything like that. Uh, and eventually I remember playing with them in the sink because it was like a big bowl, stuff like that. So I would take, you know, the tech deck and I'd be in the bathroom for a minute doing stalls and whatnot. I was, I was probably using like three fingers or like my whole hand at the time. So yeah, I didn't really know what I was doing, but they were pretty fun to use. So moving forward, this is the day I remember that changed everything about fingerboarding that I knew. So my mom took me to KB Toys and I saw this hanging up on the shelf. And I like, my mind was blown. Like I saw this and I was like, whoa, what? Flying fingers, tech deck video, like, what it's like a video it's, I, i'm like looking at the back it like shows you how to do all this stuff i was like what like i gotta have that like I, that's that's mine i remember below it too there was like a flick tricks half pipe and it was like for finger bikes but i didn't care because like i had tech decks back home and like this half pipe actually looked like real wood but like it was plastic but it looked real so i was like oh man like i I want this and like the VHS tape. I don't know if mom's gonna come through with that. So like I remember running up to her with this and I was just like, mom, mom, look, it's like, it's a video. It shows me how to like skateboard, blah, blah, with my fingers. Like, oh, can, can I get it, please, please? She's like, yeah, yeah. And then I come back with the half pipe. I'm like, whoa, if I'm gonna learn how to do this, like I need the half pipe too. <laughs> so I ended up leaving the store with both of those. I went home. I opened up the half pipe. I was down in my basement. Uh, I put it together, it took me a while. I messed around with it a little bit. I could still remember how that thing sounded. If you have one, you'll know what I'm talking about. It had like lines in it. So like when you would go, it would make like a little zippy sound like It was really fun. I remember being like obsessed with that thing. So yeah, I popped the VHS tape in and my mind was blown. The intro, seeing him do these calculated tricks, like actual tricks, was crazy to me because back then when we were just kids messing around with it nobody was doing real tricks man everybody was just flipping them like doing thousand kickflips in a row doing crazy spins no one was doing actual tricks but matt johnson on this video was actually doing like single flips calculated tricks like real skateboard tricks and i just i couldn't believe it at the time i didn't think that was possible I was completely mesmerized by this video. Like I watched it over and over and over. And I just, it took me so long to even just like get an ollie down or like a kickflip. I probably watched that video over a hundred times, like easy. 
probably more but i remember just being so obsessed with it like over the course of the summer i was constantly watching it i actually remember how i learned my first ollie um i was watching the tutorial and i'm just like man like why can't i get this i was in the basement i had a bag of pretzel sticks and i had my board and i was like oh i'm gonna take this pretzel stick and try to ollie over it and i sat there i couldn't get it couldn't get it and like out of nowhere i did like a real fast like Ollie and like I got over the pretzel stick and I remember being so fucking juiced on that. I like ran upstairs and told my brother, I was like, dude, I, I Ollie'd over this pretzel stick. Like, oh my God, he's just like, oh yeah, cool. <laughs> I just, I remember doing my first Ollie and like getting over something with two fingers and like, I just, I was so hyped. I thought it was so cool. Like I was like, oh my God, I can actually Ollie on this thing. But I kept at it and uh, the second trick I learned was a kickflip. And how I learned that was like, I kept doing like what Matt Johnson would do. He would he would show you like, hey, like do it, practice your tricks on your leg. So I was practicing the kickflip on my leg and I'm like, oh, I got it. But I couldn't do it on flat. So I like moved over to like the half pipe we had and I was able to do it like vertically, like up in the air kickflip, but I couldn't get it on flat for like the longest time. I remember after that learning backside flips and I thought that was the sickest trick ever. I remember going to the mall with some friends and there was like this big ledge like by the fountain or something and I pulled it out and I was like, yo guys, check this out. I remember doing a backside flip off this huge ledge drop and landing it first try. Like my friends were like, yo, what? Like they couldn't believe I actually did like a real skate trick and like it was just one flip and I caught it. Like they couldn't believe it, man. Like it's, that feeling is just priceless. Yeah, there was a few kids that lived down the street from me that had tech deck stuff too. So like I'd go down there, hang out with them, bring my ramps and then they would have ramps and we would combine them and stuff. We'd sit there and play with them for hours. But like when I went to my friend's houses and I showed them this video, they were like, whoa, like they couldn't believe it either. And every friend's house that like I went to and if they were like into skating and stuff like that, I brought that video with me and showed them. and. Yeah, man, it, it changed it changed all of our outlook on fingerboarding because it was almost like it wasn't even a toy anymore. It was like, it was something real. But yeah, my older brother actually got into fingerboarding. Um, he would use like three fingers and he had like, I remember him having the classic Tech Deck shape, like the fish looking board, old school board. Uh, it was like a Powell one. And yeah, because he actually rode like a old school 80s style board in real life. And like he would do pogos and shit. Um, so like he probably gravitated towards that classic shape because at the time he was riding that board. But yeah, eventually I got a hold of a camera and me and my friends would just make all kind of stupid videos. And I remember thinking one day, I'm like, oh man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna film some fingerboard stuff. Like I'm gonna, yeah, like Matt Johnson, like I wanna, I wanna be like that guy, man. He's fucking rad, like let's go. And me and my friends were all into like, you know, skate videos and Jackass and CKY. So we would make stuff like that. But I remember it hitting me one day. I was like, yo, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make a fingerboard video. Like this is gonna be like, yeah, I got a camera, let's do it. So I, I revisited fingerboarding after putting it down for a while and uh, tried to make some videos. Uh, <laughs> Windows Movie Maker, you guys remember that? Uh, later on, I remember one Christmas, my brother and I put our money together. We were like, hey man, like we're gonna go out and buy all these ramps. And uh, I remember us going to like Target and buying just all kind of tech deck ramps. Like um, pretty, we had the bull, we bought the half pipe, we had the loop, the fun box, every, like we bought every set that was on the shelf. Our brother's like, yeah, I'm gonna get these two, these three, you're gonna get these three and we're just gonna, man, it was so sick. Like I remember being so geeked, man. Like we had a whole skate park set up in our basement and we were setting it up. Like, man, it was awesome. Like that, this video really is what got us into it. Like watching this video is, is what made, that's what fueled us. Like we watched that. After I had a bunch of ramps too, like every time my mom would take us to the store, like I, I would leave there with another tech deck every time. I really gravitated towards like blind, world industries, hookups, dark star, black label, flip, toy machine, the firm, all those classic brands that tech deck had, like I had so many. But yeah, this video is pretty much what got me into fingerboarding watching it over 100 times, man. Without this video, I don't think I would be 
this passionate about finger skateboarding because you know if you've seen it how influential and just iconic it is. I mean, no one was doing the stuff like this at the time. At least like no one we knew when we were younger. Um, it was just groundbreaking stuff, man. And just to be a kid and see this on the big screen was just mesmerizing. It, it was just insane. So this is the, this is what started it all for me. Yeah, Matt Johnson is such a huge influence to me. Um, you could actually see it in my videos. He inspired me to do the Nada spin on top of the bottles, uh, the Casper slide he does in there. I do I do some Casper slides. Um, on the fun box, the 50-50 the kick flip, then 5-0 down the other side of the rail. Uh, the, the kick flip blunt slide on the, uh, the stair rail on the fun box. I mean, there's a lot of tricks he did back in 1999, man, that I still do today. Like that's how much this video has influenced me. Yeah, this video just, it's a huge inspiration for sure. I just remember being a kid watching it and I'm just like, yeah, man, one day, you know, I want to do that. Like I'm going to, I'm going to be able to do all this stuff. If I just keep practicing, I'm going to do it. And here we are. <laughs> Matt Johnson was just really ahead of the times with fingerboarding. I mean, he did some technical stuff back then. He didn't have no foam tape. He didn't light the kicks with a lighter and bend them and make them steeper. No, he was using like stock tech decks. Um, some of the parts you could see like his trucks were like really loose. I don't know if he took bushings out or what, but I mean, he was rocking the stock tech deck, man. And to be able to do those tricks on a stock tech deck back then, it's just mind blowing. I mean, it, it completely mind blowing. Yeah, to me, Matt Johnson is totally the pioneer of fingerboarding for me. He was doing technical street skating on a fingerboard and no no one was doing that, man. So to me, Matt Johnson is the OG pioneer of fingerboarding, for sure. And video making, like he was filming it, he, the camera work was on point, the music, like everything about it just glued together. Yeah, everything about this video is just perfect. I mean, except for the heel flip tutorial. Yeah. Eventually I found out about wooden fingerboards. I remember being bored in school when I was in a library and I just went to probably ask Jeeves at the time and I just typed in like finger skateboard, mini miniature skateboard. Um, and then I remember coming across close up and that was actually my first board. It was a close up wooden board. Can't remember if I ordered it from Flatface, probably at the time, but I remember it taking a really long time to come in the mail, but when I got it, man, I was, I, whew, I was psyched. I remember bringing that to school and my friends couldn't believe it was real wood. Like, they're like, what? That, oh, you got a tech deck? I'm like, this ain't a tech deck, man. It's, it's real wood. It got bearings in the wheels and stuff. And my second wooden fingerboard was one called Mitt. Mitt fingerboards, I think that was from Poland. That took like four weeks to come in, but I remember having like really high kicks on that one. That was a cool board. After that, I remember getting a complete Bali. And I used wood decks for like a really long time. And then I just ended up coming back to using tech decks. But yeah, all in all, flying fingers. This video is what got me into fingerboarding, 100%. Without this video, I most likely wouldn't be so involved with fingerboarding because it was just like a huge thing to me when I was younger. And that really, put a bookmark like in my childhood and it's like something just I'll never forget those days watching it and showing my friends and just like yeah it was just really really special to me and it still is to this day I mean me being into skateboarding that's kind of what gravitated me towards you know the fingerboard stuff but still I gotta say without that video without me seeing that with young eyes uh at the time yeah I wouldn't I, I don't think I'd be this into fingerboarding without that video but yeah, fingerboarding in general, the hobby and the community, it's just everybody's so tight knit and chill and welcoming and just everybody gets along, man. And we're all in the same vibe. Like we're all getting clips, making videos. I mean, some people don't even make videos. They just fingerboard just for the hell of it. And that, I think that's so rad. I'm just, I'm so thankful to have met so many cool people and make like so many friends that you know eventually I get to see in real life like at certain events if I'm able to make it to them uh, but I have like solid just online friends that I talk to like almost daily that I've never met in real life but they're like the coolest people ever man it's just 
Fingerboarding is really cool. Like, it's a really cool community, man. I'm really, like, happy to be a part of it. Who would have thought that these little miniature skateboards could, like, bring people, like, so close, you know? It's just, it, it's crazy to think about, man. It really is. I love this shit, man. I'm glad to see how far fingerboarding has come from where it used to be. And like, I'm excited to see where it goes in the future because there's just a lot of creative minds out there that are making things and just putting their creativity to the test. And uh, it's just so cool to see the passion that goes into making just fingerboard obstacles and fingerboards in general, just the artwork and just the whole process behind creating everything. There's a lot of creative minds behind the scenes that don't always get the recognition they deserve but i i recognize that man when i see that i'm like yeah i i see the time and effort that goes into stuff like that and i appreciate that but yeah that's my story on how i got into fingerboarding and a little bit of everything in between that if you guys have never seen this video please Find a way to give this a watch. If you've watched it at the time when you were younger, you already know. But still, you watch it today, still mind blowing. I mean, the tricks Matt Johnson does just, I, I would like, I, I can't do that on on a stock tech deck from back in the day. Uh, like, if people that can, if someone can recreate this whole entire video, do every trick he did on one of these boards, I will be very impressed, very impressed. But yeah. That was story time with Salty, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.